Now it's time for our weekly energy update with Dan McTeague, President of Canadians for Affordable Energy. All yours, Dan. Thank you for that, uh, Julie, and uh, happy Ides of March. Uh, I think there's a lot of people wondering if, in fact, the price of energy is starting to betray them and uh, wondering if, in fact, uh, these prices are going to continue to see uh, many people uh, get relieved of uh, those hard-earned dollars. And the short answer is, as we've been saying here for the past few weeks, get ready, it's coming. Well, it's here. Uh, we've seen oil this week uh, move up uh, about $5 a barrel, uh, four and a half, five, take it as you will. Most importantly, energy futures, gasoline in particular. We had a very interesting report this week from the Energy Information Agency. That's the U.S. Department of Energy's weekly petroleum report. It showed a draw of almost 6 million barrels uh, that kind of a deficit means that the U.S. economy and consumers are much stronger uh, than those who believe that high interest rates or the sustained higher interest rates by the U.S. Federal Reserve is having a, uh, you know, a damaging or dampening effect on consumers. Nothing could be further from the truth. And so the sort of tap dance we've been seeing from energy traders for the past little while uh, dumbing down, ignoring, or trying to suppress energy prices is really roaring against the current. And what they're ba basically doing is ignoring fundamentals. Supply is not there, and demand is uh, is extraordinarily strong. We're now approaching that time of the year where, in fact, prices uh, start to go up as a result of increased demand, the switch over from winter to summer gasoline. So what does that mean? Well, everyone is talking a lot about carbon taxes. Great that they're finally doing that because I've been ringing that bell for the past four years since April uh, Fool's 2020 when everyone sort of yawned, big deal, who cares, we're the only country in the world that raised a carbon tax during the pandemic. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that uh, you have this sort of uh, herd mentality. I'll take it. But let's understand something. This is about net zero. Net zero policies has many branches. Carbon taxes are only one of them. There's a second carbon tax that many parts of the country are currently paying, Atlantic Canada and British Columbia, which explains why they're paying more for gasoline than, say, Ontario and, uh, and, the, and uh, the prairies. But we're going to start to see that applied in Ontario and the prairies at the end of the year. So while on April 1st, we see an increase of 3.7 cents a litre, you're likely to see about a six cent a liter increase by the end of this year into the next year. And I realize it's a little further down the road, but watch what happens to oil. It's moving up to 85, $87 a barrel for WTI. The Canadian dollar is not responding to the higher cost. We no longer have the petrodollar. And of course we've seen gasoline futures move up about 25, 30 cents a gallon, good for about a 10 cent increase. That's gonna go up a little higher, seven cents with uh, the switch over from winter to summer gasoline in about three weeks. The carbon tax of 3.5 to, to 4 cents a litre, and that's just for gasoline. Diesel goes up even more. Uh, and then, of course, we have this whole demand picture. Uh, you know, years of underfunding, uh, ESG mandates, green attacks on oil and gas, uh, particularly Canadian, means that uh, every barrel of oil, every litre of fuel that we're using today is not being replaced. And so all of that we're using today, a lot of it has to do with investments and uh, exploration done back in the 1990s and earlier part uh, of the uh, of this deck of this uh, century so 2000 2005 that's a very scary scenario so the outlook for next week is simple you've seen prices go up an average of five cents a liter across the country look for another four to five by this time next week so bc you'll be over to a dollar 70 vancouver you'd be two dollars and four two dollars and five cents uh, alberta you're looking now at uh, much higher prices heading towards a dollar 50 a liter Saskatchewan doesn't move very much, but still about $1.48. Uh, Manitoba, yes, you've got the discount, but uh, you're still moving up three to four cents a liter to about $1.36 to $1.37 from $1.33. Ontario, uh, you know, you've been uh, in the vicinity of $1.48. Now it's $1.57 as of Saturday. Look for that to crest over $1.60. If not by Wednesday, then Thursday next week. And Quebec, of course, buck 72, always 12 cents a liter more. With Atlantic Canada, it saw some increases in uh, in Nova Scotia, but no increase in PEI, uh, no increase in uh, in New Brunswick, and no increase in Newfoundland. Look for those to increase a uh, net five to seven cents a liter. It looks like uh, reality is starting to catch up. And unfortunately for us, Julie, it means that, uh, you know, Higher prices are on their way. Get ready, fasten your seatbelts, and thank your federal liberal government for increasing that misery. That's it for this week. We'll talk next week. Thanks, Julie.
Thanks for that, Dan. And that was Dan McTeague, president of Canadians for Affordable Energy.